Hi all and welcome. Uh, for this PowerPoint, we're just going to go through it and, and have a look at individual plumbing fixtures, um, how to identify them on a drawing, and how to begin sizing them. Uh, perhaps maybe step one, step two if you wish to call it that, but it's certainly not extensive, and uh, uh, but it's meaningful. So let's start with the individual fixtures and we'll talk about uh, what some of them look like, at least some of the main characteristics. We're going to talk about, um, specifically, we're going to talk about uh, reading a drawing for fixture information, uh, some terminology and definitions that go with them, and some code versus common fixture terminology. Uh, they're often, fixtures often have one fixture, has it, multiple terms that describe it, so we're going to talk about that. Then we'll move on to individual fixture sizes and loads and then a little bit of system loading. loading. Uh, this, you could consider this uh, step one or two, if you would. We're not going beyond that, though. Next up, individual sizes and loads. So for this one here, um, we're going to go quickly through it, and I'll, I'll throw out an example. But truth be told, uh, we have some work to do, or you have some work to do, um, to orient yourself to this table, because I simply can't go through the entire table in, in a PowerPoint. You're going to have to do some exploring. So we're going to start with uh, three major tables. When you see the letter 4 in the Ontario Building Code, or 7-4, I should say, 7 means plumbing, 4 means drain. Um, so this is where you're going to find your drain and waste sizing. Vents, however, are five. So seven is plumbing, five is vents. And there's a table for sizing individual dry vents. So we'll talk about that. And then six, well, what's left? We've done the drain waste and we've done the vents. So seven is plumbing, six is water supply. So this is the water that feeds the fixture. Anyways, for what we're going to do for these three tables, we're just going to take a quick look at them and, um, and see if we know our fixtures. A few things you need to know, uh, what I call the order of operations, but really it's not a, I guess it is a math problem, but not really. Anyways, you need your fixture name, you need your fixture description or type, you need your fixture outlet pipe size, and you need your fixture unit and hydraulic load or FUs. And then for the vent, you just need your individual dry vent size. So let me show you quickly what those tables. So this is 7493. If you recall, four means drainage. So this is where you'll find your drainage for individual fixtures. Um, you have an item column to begin with. It just has a series of numbers in it. That's just an easy find feature. Uh, just helps you find the fixture you're looking for quickly and get us on the same page if I call out an item number. Column 1 is the fixture itself. So if I called out number 1, item number 1, you'd know it was an autopsy table. That's what you'll find there. Column number 2, uh, that's the minimum size of the fixture outlet pipe. So it can't be any smaller than this. This is the one that I use more often than anything unless you have specific instructions to upsize. You do not upsize. So in this particular case, or in column, it's all in inches. That's what the IN stands for. So even though it only says one and a half, what it actually means is one and a half inch pipe size. And it's important to remember too that when you see the word size, they're not talking about length. They're not talking about outside diameter. They're talking about nominal pipe size, which is approximately the inside diameter. So keep your mind on that as we go through these tables. Uh, what else do we have here? Column number three, this is the hydraulic load or the wet load, the, the amount of water, the probable amount of water that's going to come through this drain pipe. And it's in fixture units, which is that make-believe number um, that was originally based on one cubic foot per minute. In the case of an autopsy table, it has two fixture units in it. 
So that's it. We'll come back to this table a little bit later. Here we go with seven, five. Seven is plumbing, five is, do you remember? Venting. So the table 7571 is the minimum permitted vent size based on the size of the trap. It's important to remember that for virtually everything we do, so this is a rule, not a truth, um, but that's fixed route outlet pipe size. All right, so you could probably write that right in there if you wanted to. You can put FOP, FOP. So if you recall, our autopsy table had an inch and a half FOP, our fixture outlet pipe size, which is column one. Therefore, the minimum size of the vent is inch and a quarter. That's it. If we had a six inch fixture outlet pipe size, which isn't even on the other table, but if we had a ginormous fixture outlet pipe or trap size, then you'd need a two inch vent. Not much needs a two inch vent. The amount of air a pipe can handle as opposed to the amount of waste is incredible. Next one up, order of operations for supply pipe sizing. So this is seven, six, seven is plumbing, six is distribution or supply size. And you need pretty much the, the same sorts of things, right? You need your fixture and description, which is different from the drainage table, right? The terminology changes everything. Uh, to give you an example, that's where we go from laundry tray in one table. In this table, it's called the laundry sink, or actually it's called sink laundry. You'll find it under S. Uh, anyway, so you have to know your fixture and your description. You also have to know whether it's a private household type fixture or a public business type fixture. So we talked about frequency of use being a factor. This is where it really comes to play in this table because a private household toilet, for an example, doesn't get anywhere near the use that a business, um, a business toilet would, right? In a restaurant or something like that. Anyway, so you need to figure that out. You also need to have them, uh, well, then you'll get the minimum supply pipe size, which you'll find a little bit strange and it'll feel undersized. <clears throat> On the job, we mostly use half inch piping, but what you will find for this minimum pipe, supply pipe size, it's often three eighths, which seems undersized. It is not, I guarantee you. And then you'll get three different hydraulic loads, cold water supply only, and that's not the temperature of the water in the pipe. That is, what does the pipe supply? Does it supply water to the cold system? Does it supply water to the hot system? Or does it supply water to the total system, the whole home? So this would cold water supply pipe would be the smaller pipes out in the house. The hot water pipes would be anything that feeds, a cold water pipe that feeds the hot water heater and the hot water system. And then the total load again uh, is if the whole house is supplied by one single pipe. So to give you an idea of how that might look, I'll do my water service pipe in purple, and then you might have a cold water pipe going to a hot water heater, and a hot water pipe coming off the water heater. We'll do a little water heater here. But then you also get hot water going off to the house. And you also get cold water going off to the house. But now ask yourself, if the cold water is coming down into the hot water heater from here, right, because the water is coming in the building in this direction from outside, and then it goes up into the building there, and it goes up into the building here. So this cold water pipe that supplies the water heater only feeds the hot water system. Therefore, it's this one. 
If that makes any sense, I'll let that sink in for a moment. And again, this cold water pipe, uh, the purple cold water pipe, it starts outside and then comes into the house. This feeds both the hot and the cold, so it gets sized as per total. We're not going to get into the sizing. I just want you to understand the three columns of the table. And then last but not least, this cold water pipe actually only supplies cold water fixtures or cold water side of the fixture. Anyways, we'll, we'll keep on that and maybe it'll, maybe the picture doesn't do it justice, but you'll soon see in the tables as well. And here it is here. So uh, what should we pick here? So we'll go with a lavatory basin. So you have the same item numbers. You've got a lavatory basin that does 8.3 meters or less, liters per minute, sorry, 8.3 liters per minute or less. And you have a lavatory that does greater than 8.3 liters per minute. Again, I want you to stick with the smallest one, not because it's right or wrong, but because it puts us all on the same page. So go with the smallest one, which is 8.3 liters um, of water per minute. Or less and you will see that we have a minimum supply pipe size of 3 8 of an inch easy peasy then there are there are a number of columns here that are grouped together there's three four five and five six seven there's a repeat of hot or sorry cold hot and total And this is where you get into the difference between dwelling um, or household and business. And then you got the total. And remember, I'm using blue for cold, red for hot, and purple for total here. So columns three, four, and five, that's private or household use. If you get into a public building like a restaurant, a library, school, then you have to use this other set of tables. Not every fixture is everywhere. For our purposes, unless I say otherwise, we are looking for the private household stuff. It just makes it a bit simpler. So going back down to our lavatory, uh, if you follow the cold table down, 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 you'll come to 0 0.5 fixture units. That's totally different than the drain because it runs differently, right? Um, it's a drain works off gravity. So very, very low pressures, atmospheric pressures, gravity essentially. Um, whereas this system works on about 60 PSI. The drain works off much larger piping, inch and a quarter and up. This system's working on three eighths. Anyway, so the numbers are quite different from the drainage. Anyways, you got 0 0.5 for the cold. You follow the hot one down. You come to 0 0.5 as well. And you would think, well, can't we just add those two up to get the total? Which is here. And the answer is absolutely not. If you will, go out to your bathroom sink right now and turn on the cold water. Start washing your hands and then turn on the hot water. Do you get double the amount of water? Absolutely not. So you can't just add the 0.5 fixture units cold to the 0.5 fixture units hot and get one fixture unit. It's less than double. So the total load is 0 0.7 fixture units. And then when you go up to a commercial um, in here, you'll see that the numbers are quite a bit larger for that fixture. And it's just because it'll get that much more use, right? I don't know how many times you wash your hands in a day in the bathroom sink, as an example, or brush your teeth, but I'm willing to bet it's like two or three. Where in a restaurant, that sink might get used two or three times every hour. Um, I'm oversimplifying that, but that it gives you a sense of why we have the two different loads. So I said to you before, watch out for the 3 8 pipe size. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here. So the code states 3 8 minimum, 
but to be honest we never use three eight piping anymore they did in the fifty's nineteen fifty's they used three eight iron pipe to supply like a lavatory basin so a couple of things you got to know is that it's three eight pipe size is the approximate ID or the nominal size approximate inside diameter so when you look at a half inch fitting you know that half inch copper is five eighths OD right and one eighth larger than the stated size then you know this fitting is five eighths inside diameter now what do you think when you have a thick piece of half inch PEX with this teeny tiny insert fitting inside of it what do you think the inside diameter is of that you got it three eighths so we don't use we don't keep in our tables the three eighths minimum size because that's the piping we use we keep that three eighths minimum size because of the fittings we use otherwise they might have changed it anyway so that gives you some sense of where that comes from in the code book um, they often or in the on the job you'll often have what we call a 3 8 riser tube that's not what this code is talking about the 3 8 minimum size is the pipe that comes out of the wall this riser tube is captured in 76343 uh, and it actually has quarter quarter inch is what it is inside diameter ID so that's the size it might be 3 8 OD right but in the code book it actually states 6.3 millimeters inside diameter which is a quarter inch anyway so don't get those things confused just know that um, there's lots of numbers out there and it takes a while to get to know them but for now I want you to just trust those tables so this next slide uh, shows the table that I use for sizing. It's just a starting spot. I'm just going to do one of them for you. You do have an exercise you can do. Um, in fact, you can use this as your exercise if you want and fill out the whole table. I'm just going to get you started by doing one and I'm going to do the laundry tray. So if you take a look at 7493, in your code books you will find it to be item 18 um, and there's two options there there's 18a or 18b when you look across at 18a it says inch and a half and one and a half so that's inch and a half pipe size and one and a half fixture units when you look across at 18b you will see that's for a three compartment sink and it's an inch and a half drain as well, but two fixture units. So when I ask you to find the smaller of the two, you will find it to be A. So we can write that right on here. If you like 18, I'm using a mouse for this, it's painful. 18A, there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna stop there. Anyways, it just says a single or a double, so we'll just put a single down here. Single. <laughs> this doesn't have a text feature, obviously. So this has a single. By the way, I never know what fixture I'm going to do. So the minimum fixture outlet pipe size is inch and a half. Otherwise, I could have put this into PowerPoint, right? I filled this all in automatically. And it doesn't ever say inches, but I would put inches in there. Put your little quotation marks. There you go. One and a half inches fixture outlet pipe size. And then it says one and a half fifth fixture units. I would change this to a decimal when you're doing this one. So it doesn't get confused with the fraction of a half. If you have a copy of the unofficial code, this has been done already for you. Anyway, so that's your laundry tray. 
Then you can skip on over to 7571. And remember, just follow along with the code numbers. Don't worry about the page numbers. They'll just trip you up, especially if there's a bunch of different copies out there. So 7571, you go down to item number two because you have an inch and a half drain, right? Inch and a half drain here. Nope, that's supposed to be an arrow. Not very good arrow. Anyways, inch and a half drain. Therefore, your minimum vent size is inch and a quarter. I'm just using a slightly different color green here to make it stand out. And then the next one is 7632A. It's 7632A. I don't know why I took the A out of there. So just flip through your book and find that one. So you can, uh, these tables are alphabetical. So you can go down to L for laundry tray, but you're not going to find it. You have to go to S for sink. And the one you're after is number 31, laundry sink or sink laundry, sorry. So you can say item 31. And it's categorized as a sink. Single sink, I guess. And if you look across, you'll see that the minimum supply pipe size is 3 8 And then while I got the color purple up, I'm going to do the total, which is 1.4 fixture units. And then I'll do the hot. And then I'll do the cold. 1FU, 1FU. And that's it. So I've kind of color coded it a little bit using uh, green for the DWV and then red and blue for the um, hot and cold. But that's exactly how you do it, and you just do them all. You'll find some very interesting things when you go through this table, um, which maybe I shouldn't give away, but I'll give you a hint. The terminology is always changing, but also a floor drain. You'll find it under 7493, and you'll, oops, sorry, the floor drain. You'll find under 7493 and 7571, but it doesn't have a water supply, so this will be NA in here. Whoops, what happened? There we go. Right? It's not applicable. It doesn't have a water supply, and that goes for all of it. So not every fixture is on every table. Not every fixture is identified using the same language. Essentially, it's a mess.